Today, I show you how to turn your GoPro footage into something spectacular. What is up guys and welcome back to another video. Today I show you how to set your GoPro and color correct the footage. So you just bought your brand new GoPro Hero camera. You take it out and you record your epic ride just to find out that it looks and sounds nothing like what you've seen on YouTube. From the factory, your GoPro is set up for full automatic recording. You need to take it off automatic and set it up so there is no image processing. This will allow you to start your editing with basically a blank canvas and you can color correct with amazing results. I'm going to set up my GoPro from scratch here and show you exactly what my settings are. First, power on your GoPro and click the little bubble at the bottom of the screen where it shows your video resolution settings. If you're on a GoPro 9, select one of the multiple presets. I'm going to select the one that says standard by clicking the pencil icon. This is where you're going to be setting your resolution and your frames per second, so go ahead and click that. I recommend a minimum of 2.7K at 60 frames per second. This will give you a nice big image that can still be easily edited on multiple computers without issue. You can certainly select whatever you want, but with 2.7K you will have much better quality and video stabilization will work much better as well. Next, head on over to the lens setting. Set that to super view. This is the widest and tallest field of view available on the GoPros. After that, turn on Hypersmooth. This is your video stabilization setting. I wouldn't recommend using Boost because this will crop the image too much, resulting in a very zoomed in video. If you have an option to turn on ProTune, do that now. On the GoPro 9, you have the option to run the standard bitrate or the new high bitrate setting. I highly recommend turning it to high. This will run at 100 megabits per second, resulting in a better quality image. For the shutter, keep it on auto. You don't want to mess with that. Next, you will see EV Comp. This is your exposure value compensation setting. I like to set this at negative two. It will change depending on your environment, but I normally keep it at negative two. This will force the camera to keep the exposure low so you do not overexpose the highlights and blow them out. The next setting is white balance. I have been experimenting with white balance recently. I normally set it at 5500K and forget about it because it's usually good for most settings outdoors. But lately, I've been using native white balance. Native white balance is the industry standardized optimized color. The native option yields a minimally processed data file directly from the image sensor that allows for more precise adjustments to be made in the post-production stage. Setting the camera to native will give you a very dull image that can be brought to life when editing. If you carry a backpack with you, try and keep something white in there, preferably a piece of printer paper. You will show this at the start of your filming so you can reference it when color correcting. This setting is what I use in the upcoming examples. After that is ISO minimum. ISO is basically fake lighting. It will brighten or darken the image. I set the minimum at 100, which is the lowest. Then you have ISO max. I set this to the absolute max it can go, which is 6400. This helps with video stabilization, GoPro claims. But remember, the higher the number, the more noise that gets introduced into the image. If you're filming in lower light, I suggest lowering this number to somewhere around 1600 or so. Next is sharpness. If this had an off setting, I would use it every single time. I personally prefer to sharpen in post, so I set this to the low setting. GoPro tends to add too much sharpening, resulting in a fake cartoony looking image. After that, we have color. This is one of the most important settings you're going to be selecting. The factory setting is GoPro color. Set this to flat. This will give you a flat color profile that will allow you to color correct in post to get that nice cinematic look to your footage. The next setting is for your audio. You will see the raw audio option. Turn that to high. This will give you a nice fully processed audio file to add to your footage. To take full advantage of this, you will have to remove your memory card from your camera and insert it into your computer. You will see a separate WAV file next to your MP4 video file. You can sync this to your video in post. Enjoy your studio quality sound. And the last setting is the wind setting. This is for your onboard microphones. Turn this to off. With it on or auto, the GoPro will be switching between stereo mics and the wind mics constantly, resulting in very poor audio. The wind mics muffle the sound way too much for my liking. Which brings me to my next little mod, I'll call it. You may notice that my GoPro has little furry bits on it. Those are called dead cats. 
you could buy them on Amazon for around five to 10 bucks. This will get rid of the wind noise you get while flying down the mountain or on a windy day. You can even go a step further and get a foam wind muff that fits over the entire GoPro and the Dead Cats as well. This will completely minimize all wind noise, leaving you with crystal clear audio. Okay, so next is color correction. You don't have to do it this way, but this is the way that I prefer. So you're gonna wanna take a screen grab of your video in your video editing software and upload it to Lightroom or another type of photo editing software. So this is the screen grab from one of my videos here. As you can see, it's nicely exposed everywhere because I'm using native white balance. So before I mentioned something about the white piece of paper. So what you're gonna do is you're gonna find something in your video or that white piece of paper, and you're going to go to the section where it says color or white balance. You're gonna click your little eyeglass dropper and you're gonna find something white or that piece of paper which makes it super simple and you're gonna click it and then it's gonna set your white balance my white balance is already set in this image so I'm not gonna worry about that but you can click the auto function and that will automatically set all of your stuff while doing this you're not going to be messing with anything past color grading don't do any texture clarity sharpening nothing like that okay all you're focusing on is the colors. Um, I don't even want to focus on the tone curve. I'll do that within Premiere Pro. I'm going to up my contrast a little bit here. One thing to note, while upping your contrast, it's also upping your saturation. So take that into account. So you don't want to go full bore. You want to just kind of find that little happy medium here. Kind of enjoy that there. So now if you feel like stuff's too bright, you can always take whites out or take your highlights down a little bit. Uh, personally, I really like how this looks. So you want to set your blacks and your whites. You can up your saturation. You can go a little overboard. It's totally okay because we're going to be fixing that right here. So you're going to be going through this. This is your color mixer. Your hue, saturation, and luminance. Obviously your hue is going to be changing the color of it. So anything that's red, I could change to purple or pink or orange, but I'm gonna be keeping that there. Your saturation obviously is how intense the color of it is. And luminance is your darkness and brightness of it. With that being said, you could turn it down a little bit. If the color is a little too much, you could turn it down. And you'll learn this, okay? This is a good thing to learn. So when you add saturation, yellows will form in your trees and your grass. So one thing I like to personally do is kind of make them orange and then bring down the saturation all the way and slowly add it in until you see it kind of filling out nice. You don't have to go that much, obviously, but and then you can brighten them or darken them as much as you want. And then you could further desaturate the oranges. So just to see what I've done so far, this is what we started with, and this is what we currently have. And this is only three colors. So you'll have your greens now, which you can brighten the greens up, darken the greens, make them more like towards the yellow spectrum. I'm gonna leave them where they are and just kinda pull them out a little bit, maybe brighten them up. Uh, I don't know if I have much blues in here. My bike obviously is blue, but I don't want it too bright gonna darken it out a bit your more blues this is actual blue this one's cyan I doubt there's any purples so we'll just take them out completely so before we go any further let's take a before and after here's before and this is what we currently have it's good to do that to make sure that you're not over processing so what I like to do now um, you can go to your shadows and add in blues and you'll see where it'll kind of just fit in and you won't notice really too much of a difference like right there i don't really notice too much of a difference if you're using lightroom and you hold shift on this shadow section you could drag that saturation of that color of how much you're adding in so add some blues in to the shadows it will make your shadows a little deeper looking and more full to check what you're doing you can click this little eye and see exactly what that's doing so let's see what that's doing there that's really bringing out those shadows a little bit and then you want the opposite color for your highlights some oranges or yellows and again same thing hold shift and bring them up now we can check and see what that did 
it doesn't do a whole lot it's just like it makes it that much better so here's both of the colors gone with so it made a little bit of a difference there and i really like how that looks and that's it you're done there so you want to download this program it is called IWLTBAP LUT Generator, and I will link that down below in the description. You're gonna generate this HALD file, which I will show you what that is in one second. So what you're gonna be doing right now is creating a LUT, a lookup table. So to create that lookup table, what you're gonna to wanna to do is go up to edit here and copy your settings. So everything you just did here, you wanna copy. And then that HALD file is going to look something like this. This has already been edited because I use this a lot for when I'm editing videos. But what you're gonna do is just go up right here to edit and then you're gonna paste your settings and you notice how that changed. So now what you're gonna do is you're going to export this howled image, export it to your desktop or wherever you're saving your videos, wherever it's convenient for you. And then you're gonna go into this LUT generator here and click convert to cube. You're gonna find that howled file wherever you saved it and you're gonna upload it to it. And then it's going to create your cube file, which is your LUT. It's good to save it. We'll save it as a GoPro test video or something. And then you're gonna open up your program that you're gonna be editing your video with and uh, upload your footage and all that stuff here. And then you're gonna be going to the assembly section or whatever, and you're going to be creating an adjustment layer. It'll create the same as the footage. So you're gonna drag that adjustment layer. Now this adjustment layer is going to be what you're gonna be color correcting on. So you'll go over to the color section, you're gonna to go to basic correction, and then you're gonna be browsing for your lookup table that you just created. In my instance, I'm going to be selecting GoPro test video.cube, upload that LUT, and then it should look pretty close to what you just edited. You could scrub through the video, go along, and it should look pretty good everywhere that you're at. This is probably where I was when I uh, edited that little clip there. So now one thing you can do here is go to curves. So this is the curve section. So what I like to do is put a point right in the center there and then put a point at the darks and you're gonna bring down your shadows until they're pretty even across. And then you can bring up your highlights, but watch so you're not clipping like I am currently. It could be adjusted there like that. And that's a pretty good looking image. So you can, you can play your footage and you'll notice that it looks pretty good going all the way through it. But that is really all that there is to it. Color correction really isn't as hard as you may think it is. It does take practice to actually understand what everything does, but it's not very difficult. Link down below in the description is the LUT that I just created. Go ahead and use that in your videos. You can edit it if you want, whatever you want to do with it, it's yours. All clickable links down below in the description. As always, thank you so much for watching. I'll see you next time.